All right, your next comedian is uh, one of the organizers of McCormick's uh, Leper Comedy, which is the official name of this. Uh, very funny, very funny dude. Uh, give it up, Andrew Pauly! Hey, uh, who tonight is happy? Make some noise if you're happy. Yeah! I'm good. I'm not. I'm sad. Would you like to know why? 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 You know, last week I lost my wife and kids. In a card game. <laughs> when we were at the bus station, I know I was sure it was the card on the right, but his hands were moving so fast. <laughs> what are we talking about tonight? Hey, I live in a house with two stories, and I don't believe either of them. <laughs> Do I have any cops in the crowd? No? Good. Cops are fascinating. Cops are, I think, magical. Uh, most cops have this innate ability to find things in your pockets even when you were sure they were empty. <laughs> the other night I got stopped by a cop, and he shines a flashlight in my eyes, and he said, Hey, you look suspicious. I say, yeah, no shit, I'm talking to a cop. <laughs> you know, when you're a kid, uh, a little kid, they'll say, hey, reach for the stars. And then you grow up and you move out to Hollywood and they say, hey, keep a respectful distance from the stars. <laughs> uh, whatever. Any convenience stores in the crowd? No? Well, here's a tip if you're a convenience store. If you're more than three blocks from my house, and or I'm hungover, you're just a fucking store. I want to start my own convenience store. It's going to be an inconvenience store. You go in there, there's no price tags on anything. Everything's up on a really high shelf. You can get a hot dog. It's a mocha dog. You can go to get... Uh, coffee and get a cup full of hot dog chili. It's gross. No, nothing. That's all right. That's all right. I'm an animal lover. My favorite animal is the anteater. However, I feel bad for the anteater because his whole identity is wrapped up in his diet. You know, nobody else has got that problem. And what if it was like that for me? You know, what if the guy I'm interviewing with so there's one Mr. Pizza Eater. I think you're a man. And I'm like, hey, but what about my, uh, my degree, man, and all my training? And he's like, hey, I know your last name. I know what to get you for lunch on your birthday. You're hired. That's what the anteater deals with on a daily basis. Think about it. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I hate it when people give their kids rhyming names, you know? Like, I've got this friend and they've got a boy and a girl, they're real cute kids, you know? They had the girl first, they named her Suzanne. Then they had the little boy and they named him Tim Can. <laughs> Quit giving your kids rhyming names. It's stupid. Okay. So, sometimes I get real high and I think about things that I know nothing about. Like color theory. Artists and the artists. And I don't know shit about color theory or art in general. So I base my whole uh, color wheel on college football uniforms. So I do watch a lot of that. So I know that like blue and gold go together, but blue and silver don't. <laughs> but like my color wheel is kind of in the shape of a football, so it's all fucked up anyway. Doesn't matter. Yeah, oh, speaking of that, I keep finding myself in the same position I found myself when I was like 14, which is stoned at the mall. <laughs> and um, it's not that bad, you know? I'm kind of like getting stoned at the mall. They got a lot of escalators at the mall, which is kind of cool. So that's kind of like an amusement park ride. But sometimes I get really high. Now I find myself on the escalator, and I'm like halfway up the escalator, I kind of forget if I'm going up or down, you know? The dimensions don't really make sense. So I start freaking out. I'm like, holy shit, I'm getting to the edge, I'm getting to the edge, I'm getting to the edge. Oh, a sail on kayaks at Dick's Sporting Goods. Why not? What else? 
I recently quit smoking cigarettes, which is exciting. I still have my matches and my lighters around. Uh, I won't use the matches anymore, I'll use the lighters. I hate matches, I think matches are really boring. You know, you have one book of matches and they all look the same. I guess that's how they got their name. I want to revolutionize the match industry. I'm going to start a company called Mismatches. You have know, a book of mismatches and they're all a little bit different, you know? Like, hey, this one is Tiger Stripe, and this one's Polka Dot, and this one's Plaid. And this one looks like a tall, skinny, naked, redheaded guy with no arms from far away. So that's a regular match, but the rest of them are pretty cool, I think. Uh, I got up this morning, I read my horoscope. It said, beware of questionable advice given to you based on your birthday. <laughs> No, I don't have psychic powers, but I know that that guy got fired. I, uh, I used to have this girlfriend who was awesome. She used to cook for me all the time. And one time, uh, she said, hey, on your way home from uh, work, stop at the store and pick me up a cantaloupe. And I said, okay, do you mean a melon or do you mean an incapable antelope? <laughs> Thank you, have a good night. <laughs> The next comedian uh, not only runs the um, open mic at Fallout, which is right up the street, and he does that on the second and fourth Tuesdays of every month, uh, he also has the honor of being Richmond's only uh, Jewish comedian, which is rather odd. And he's rather odd, too. Very funny guy. Give him a big round of applause for Joshua Saucier. So, right off the bat, I, uh, I have to preface this. Uh, tonight I will be doing, uh, instead of my normal material, some of it, but I'm doing a Mad Lib set as composed by Roy Rogers, who basically <laughs> closed his eyes and went through my notebook and said, do these jokes in this order. So, you know what? Fuck it. It's worth it. Fortunately, he, uh, he gave me a softball to start off with. I, uh, I'm a huge fucking nerd. Like, that's just... I'm not alone in this room, I know, but I, uh, I'm bigger than the rest of you. Like, uh, I played Magic the Gathering for 11 and a half years, back before it was cool. And I, I kicked the habit, like, I got over it. Um, a couple years go by, and I'm, uh, I'm in a bar, and I'm talking to a girl. And I'm trying to be cool, which isn't working, but this guy walks over and recognizes me. says, hey man, I know you, you played Magic! Yeah. Yeah, you were... You were the guy, you play the black decks all the time. I guess. I'm talking to this, could you? No, man, you, you love black decks, man. We called you the king of black decks. Yeah, that's me. Uh, go away. I turn back to the girl and she goes, did that guy just say you love black dicks? I told her yes, because it was less embarrassing than what we were talking about. Um... That, uh, Roy gave me that because he likes it, so that was the only one he didn't pick fucking randomly. Um, and it's good, I like that, you know, it's, it's a dick joke, and it makes fun of me. That's easy, that's like stealing, uh, stealing candy from a baby. Which, well, that's a weird expression, because it means, like, you're doing something easy, but it's something bad. You're not supposed to steal candy from a baby. Like, but if you reverse it, like, if you were to say, take a baby away from a stripper named Candy, You'd probably be doing them both a favor, so... It's all in how you look at it. Um, I actually, uh... Hopefully I won't have that problem. Uh, the last time I slept with a stripper named Candy, I, I didn't want her to have a baby, so... Uh, I used my, uh, my time on her trick. I used my lucky condom. It's always worked so far, so... Keeping my fingers crossed. See, it's never mind. I don't care. Thanks, Ruth. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> See, that's weird. I asked you guys a question, and you just made a lot of noise and went, woo. That's, that's not really the answer to a question. Like, later tonight, when, you're, uh, when you get pulled over for driving drunk and the cops ask if you were drunk at night, don't go, woo, yeah! Yeah, uh, But also, don't take my advice. So if you actually do that, uh, you're going to wind up in court. And uh, again, you're going to get asked how you plead. 
Woo! is not a good answer at that point. Uh, although it might work the next time you're asked a question, which is when your cellmate asks you if you like that bitch. <sighs> um, I, uh, this one was the struggle. I actually, on a completely unrelated note, because that's how Roy wrote it, um, I feel, I feel kind of put out. Like, at, I hear a lot about women in the workforce bitching about, well, not bitching, they've got a point, but they complain about, you know, it's not fair, there's all these things, but you know what? I, as a man who looks like me, I can't really sleep my way to the top. That's not an option for me. I don't have that opportunity. I can sleep my way out of a job. I can sleep my way to not getting a raise. I can pretty much just sleep my way to getting laid. That's the perk I get for sleeping with my boss. Um, hi, Roy. Thanks. The title uh, is much better. Just say the title. The title is Sleep My Way Nowhere. Oh, it's much better. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, that made it <laughs> um, so I, uh, I also, again, with women and things that are weird, um, there's no segues. I don't know how to fucking write a segue for this shit. Um, there's, a, there's this stereotype that, you know, the stripper is just doing it to, to put her way through college. Bullshit. Bullshit. I like the kind of girl who is just going to college so she has an excuse to strip on the weekends. Um, Alright, and then I got a couple stories. I like these. Um, so I was, uh, I was actually, I was around the corner, I was in fucking Murder Alley a couple weeks ago. Um, and I saw this fucking nasty, rained on, dirty mattress. Uh, and a homeless guy passed out on the ground next to the mattress. The homeless guy would not sleep on the mattress because it was fucking disgusting. And then a pickup truck with two fucking VCU college kids rolled up. They ran over grabbed the damn mattress and threw it in the back of their truck because they were going to take it back to their room and sleep on it. But the homeless guy wouldn't fucking pass out on it. Uh, Alright, my last story before I get out of here is, uh, this happened on Monday. Uh, I don't know if anybody else knows, I call him Shuffle Jogger. There's an old guy who jogs around the fan like this, just down the middle of the road. You know, and he's a fan guy. Uh, I was walking down the street and he's shuffling down the middle of the road, and in the back of my head, because I'm a comedian and an asshole, I'm thinking of all these ways to make fun of him. Uh, two blocks later, I realize I have not yet passed him, so then I start thinking of ways to make fun of me. Uh, and then, I shit you not, he, he shuffles over to the curb, puts one foot up on the curb, and just Kaiser says that his way is around the corner. Just fucking walks off like nothing. I go around the corner, he's gone. He's fucking in the wind. Alright, that's my story. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Roy Rogers. You've been great. John Saucier! Who will never let anybody else look at his uh, joke list ever again because of what just happened, but that's okay. You guys ready for your next comic? Yeah. All right, like I said, uh, Josh runs uh, Fallout, and this guy, you can find him at Fallout. Um, leaving early. Uh, give it up for Jay Walter Brayman. Ooh, how's everybody doing tonight? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to talk to all of you like it's a huge crowd because fuck this camera. They don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm usually over at Fall. It's my first time at McCormick's. I'm really excited. Uh, because comedy isn't all I do, so I don't get the time to do this every week as I would like. Uh, I've got a hardcore punk band coming out, uh, Roid Rage. Uh, some of our songs are called, uh, you know, uh, Hypogonadism. Uh, we've got Fighting in the Parking Lot. And then, of course, we've got our sensitive love ballad. Uh, it's called I Love You, That's Why I Hit You With a Brick. And, uh, I'm also a producer. I've got a, uh, a rapper that's really up and coming. Uh, DMV, Domestic Violence. And uh, I'm really excited. He's got a single coming out. It's called uh, Hit Her Till She Ain't Breathing, Hit Her Till She's Season. And that's already a number one hit in Libya, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and oddly enough, Utah. Who would have guessed? Uh, 
So I like to I like to ask a question, everybody in the audience. When did bacon make the big leap from food to condiment? I, I remember 10 years ago, you had it with breakfast, you put on a burger, and that was it. You went on with your day, man. Nowadays, y'all put bacon on everything, man. There's like chocolate covered bacon, they got bacon ice cream, bacon bubble gum. I don't know. I'm, I'm just a little shocked. I mean, kind of bacon overload. You're going to have to excuse me a minute here. I was, in, I was in Burger King the other day. Uh, guy in front of me orders a quad stacker. If you don't know what those are, a quad stacker is four patties of meat and bacon and cheese in between each one with none of that faggy lettuce, tomato, onion crap to distract you from all that grease just smacking into your gut like a 2,000 calorie Nagasaki bomb. He orders one of those disgusting, greasy monstrosities, and the woman, with a straight face, asks him, you know, sir, for 60 cents extra, you can add bacon. This burger has eight strips of bacon on it. That's it. That's all you need in a day. You fulfilled your bacon quota. I, I paid close attention to him. I was waiting for him to say yes. Yes, ma'am, I would like extra bacon on that. That's how it's gonna happen. That, that's my bet for 2012. It's just one guy that's just a little too fat, standing in the wrong fast food restaurant at the wrong time, gets a little over eager with the pork products, boom. We're all floating down rivers of lava, thanks to that guy. That's how it happens, man. All right. I, I'm, I'm sorry. This is the last time I'm ever going to be able to perform this joke, but I saved it for McCormick's. Like I said, my first time here. I want to do this joke. It's my last time being able to perform it because she's getting better, and that's that's good for her and her family, but it's not good for my comedy career. So I was watching TV uh, and during Martin Luther King weekend, and they had this ad on that really just inspired me. They had a picture of a Chevy truck. That comes on, and it goes away. Then they have a quote from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. That goes on and comes away. Then they have a picture of Martin Luther King, the Chevy symbol, that's it, the ad's over. So if you followed that from beginning to end, Martin Luther King, buy a Chevy, that's it. And it's all well and good, but Martin Luther King's been dead for almost 50 years. I can, I can give you an ad based on current events, based on somebody in the news right now. Your newest spokesperson for Kroger supermarkets and pharmacies, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Because I used to really dread walking into the supermarket, but now the only thing I, that's going to blow my mind are the low, low prices. And then I'm thinking they have a graphic designer and a little piece of her skull flying off and I'll pop that week's specials. <laughs> or even better, you get a chorus line of dead nine-year-old girls behind her. This week only, ground beef, 99 cents a pound, which is a good deal. Yeah, not to interrupt. I just want to point out. And I just want to finish up by saying, everybody, everybody gets a good laugh at Gabrielle Gifford saying, nobody, nobody really has a reaction to the Martin Luther King thing. Does that mean after 50 years, everybody's cool with him getting the same amount of respect as Dennis Leary and the guy that hosts Dirty Jobs? <laughs> I'm Jay Walter Braven. I'm really happy to be here. You guys have a great night. All right. That was Jay Walter Braven and his hat.